Stocks rose Friday, steadying after selling off sharply on Thursday following a report that President Biden was eyeing a proposal to increase capital gains taxes on the wealthy individuals like many of the subscribers to this channel. The S&P 500 added more than 1% to reach a record intraday high, but ended just short of its record closing high. The Dow and the Nasdaq also rose to reverse their Thursday losses following that report, which suggested Biden was considering increasing capital gains taxes. The current base capital gains tax is 20%, and whether the Democrats are successful or not, there will be many attempts to raise taxes to pay for the bundle of government programs being proposed. And so when you have a very high valuation in the market, anything that is bad news can spark a bit of a sell-off. And next week will be important, too, since we're going to get quarterly results from mega-cap companies including Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook. However, I'm going to be watching the 10-year bond and the VIX. They're not ready to cause trouble, but I can smell it coming. So, let's see how the charts are looking. Before we get to our charts, I just want to highlight the current market. According to Bank of America, the trailing P.E. ratio recently was just over 29 times versus the average P.E. ratio of about 15 times over the past 100 years. And the forward P.E. is currently about 22 times versus the average over the past 100 years of about 15 and a half times. And this is partly why I've been taking some profits lately I want to take them off the table to make sure that I have them for a rainy day. Okay, let's go take a look at our charts. And today we're going to look at one chart, which is the six-month daily on the spiders, the SPY, and the close on Friday was 416.74. We're still moving within this channel here, the bottom line running up like that somewhat, and the top channel line moving through like that somewhat. Now, we didn't break up and through, at least where I've drawn the line. We may have, but we've come back down here, and we're going to give another attempt to move up and through that. It doesn't really matter. We're still on the upside, and I think uh, things are weakening, though. So I think it's going to get up here and get reflected back down, and perhaps back down to that bottom channel line. As long as we stay within that channel, the market's going to continue to move on up. Here into volume, it looks fine. Nothing wrong with that. Into the MAC. The MAC is showing that uh, this topping process here might bring us down below, and then that could continue further. So we're going to have to watch that. Keep a close eye out for that. Back here is the same sort of circumstance that I'd be looking for. We came on through and down here. However, the market continued its upward move, as you can see. Let's go back up here. So it continued on. So I don't think it's too much of a problem. Back here, again, we'll probably go down below on the downside. We're going to perhaps work our way back up here next week. But I think the subsequent weeks, we may be heading on down, at least as the oscillator shows. We'll see what the price chart does. You can see here the histogram definitely rolling over, heading on down. Maybe not really all that steep. I don't think we're going to go too far below there. Pretty shallow. Into the price rate of change, much the same there. The relative strength, we're at 64.76, so things are weakening. Definitely, we have that rollover here, but I don't think there's been any real significant damage. Here in the stochastics, much the same. And then the Williams, pretty much the same as well. Back up here to the price chart. And as long as we stay within that channel, I think things are hunky-dory. It's when we get below that bottom trend line that we really need to watch out for. But I don't think that's going to happen next week. Let's see what happens the week after. And so for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.